uh, IPREA and also Charlie Day, who is the uh, Chief Executive of Melbourne Ventures uh, Commercialisation Arm, and also a, a Vice Chair of KCA. So what I thought I might do is just a couple of people in the audience said to me at, at lunch, uh, what's KCA about? Is that the sort of uh, Australian version of the KGB? And the answer is no. No, it's an organisation which is uh, Knowledge Commercialisation Australasia. It's a member organisation and its uh, goals are professional development and improvements in uh, commercialisation and uh, intellectual property management from the uh, public sector to the private sector. It's about 35 members as a member organisation. Represents uh, universities in Australia and New Zealand, and uh, represents 26 universities in Australia. So over 97% of the research been in universities, CSIRO, and other public sector members are included. So what I thought I'd do is because this set, this um, uh, how shall I put it? This topic is a sort of a, a complex topic because you need to define what what is success. How are we going to define success in public sector commercialisation? Because there are many possible um, uh, factors and then all the measures that we look at when we look at uh, transferring technology. So is it about the money? Is it about the effective uh, technology transfer? Is it about the number of invention disclosures or patents that we create? How, how are we going to measure success? So perhaps at the end when we do go to question time we'll try to address some of those questions for you. The panel will. I'll just ask them and I'll address them. Um, but seriously, um, in terms of uh, uh, Casey, I just did a survey, the latest data we have is 2007, we did a survey of our members from 2005 and 2007, and I'll just give you some sort of snippets out of that. Uh, for example, if you look at the uh, KCA members in Australia, mainly CSIRO and universities, uh, there was about a billion dollars in research contracts with industry uh, that the members reported. Uh, that was about two-thirds of universities, one-third CSIRO. And that is a very important measure of commercialisation for us because that involves intellectual property transfer to the private sector with uh, university or CSIRO assistance. And there's various forms of intellectual property um, agreement in, in possible there. Uh, some interesting measures, uh, number of licences bearing income uh, are going up. On average, in that period, Australia is producing about 25 to 28 spin-out companies, so it's fairly consistent at that level. And I'll just sort of pick on one thing in terms of the, the, dollars, the dollars produced out of licensing uh, incomes and, and uh, cash exits out of companies or spin-out companies for 2007 was about 195, 200 million. But in that year, Monash University cashed out about 100 million out of uh, Monash Australia IVF, the IVF. Uh, a company which they had. So you take that away, the sector is showing about $100 million in licensing income and um, other related uh, smaller uh, spin-out exits. And if you drill further into that, you find that after, sorry, in those years 2005 to 2008, you're getting nice increases in licensing income which is driven largely by University of Queensland and UniQuest Gardasil revenues. For those of you who know the story, it's a, uh, a vaccine uh, which uh, is against the HPV um, uh, <coughs> disease, so basically uh, preventing cervical cancer in girls and women. And so that brings me to another question is, how do you find success? Okay, in 2008, Merck made a billion dollars in sales out of that vaccine in various countries in the world. Is success the fact that Merck made that money, or that University of Queensland got a smaller amount of money through the licensing income, or is it in fact that we delivered several million doses in 90 countries and saved a lot of uh, potential uh, cervical cancer cases in, 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 those, in those countries? In other words, the public good. So this is part of the discussion today, what sort of qualifies uh, success. So we're going to, have to take it from different uh, points of view. Our first speaker from the UK is going to talk a little bit about uh, the situation there. And some other questions I might ask is that how do we see this in terms of economic development of the country? Should a university be focused on spin-out companies in its local area to try to improve employment? Um, you know, how important is the role of the inventor in, the pro in this whole process? Uh, in some cases it can be quite critical that a licensing deal it may not be that, that important. So there's all these questions are part of this uh, uh, session. And are patents in the university sector, in this commercialisation of the university sector, are they in fact overrated? 
if we were going to do a study, and maybe if you will look at this, how many patents are dropped at which stages by the universities uh, as they try to go down this path of commercialization. Anyway, I think oh, that's enough. From